A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Repair to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. The reading. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And you are not concerned with anyone's opinion. For you do not regard a person's status. status. Tell us, then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing they are malicious, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pay the sense tax. Then they handed him a Roman coin. He said to them, whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that he said to them, then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon and welcome. Please do me a favor. If you have a phone, please turn it off. Thank you. Jesus is not going to call you on your phone. <laughs> He's going to call you in your heart. That's why we're here. I greet you with the greeting of St. Francis. May the Lord give you peace. Amen. Um, so welcome everyone. So, so great to see you all. This is one of my favorite saints of all time, Saint Pope John Paul II. Did you see the statue we have of him on the lawn? Do you notice the decorations? So there's the flowers and the Our Lady just, okay. So if you go over there and say a prayer, he's offering double the prayer today. So if you uh, pray to a saint on their feast day, you get double the grace, all right? So we we're always looking for a deal, aren't we? So we welcome, we have some honored guests here. Um, we welcome Father Sylvester. Welcome, Father. So great to have you here. Thank you for your help. So, I would love to just have a recording of him reading the whole Bible. Isn't his voice so beautiful? Yeah, thank you, Father. And uh, Brother Pius, his stunt double is here, Brother Maximilian. So they look like twins. And Brother Thomas as well. Where's Brother Thomas? There he, okay, so the brother's here on retreat. You know when you go to the zoo and it says, don't feed the animals? So the, don't talk to the brothers, they're on retreat, okay? <laughs> so, or talk to them, all right. Um, so my friends, here we are. And um, so we're gonna pull together a few stories of today's saint with something that's happening in the readings and then also kind of to address what we're looking at in the world right now. It's kind of an intense time, huh? I think we're all a little worried, but we're here. You've done the best thing you could possibly do today. Of all the options, the things that were available to you, you did the best thing possible, and that is getting to Mass, getting to church, praying, you know. The second best thing you could have done was make sure there's enough gas in the car to get to Mass, okay? <laughs> Unless you've got a hybrid or a Tesla, then okay, juice, all right, juice in the car. Um, so my friends, I grew up, two of my heroes growing up was St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta and St. Pope John Paul II. They, I mean, they just, I knew growing up, these were two wonderful, authentic human beings. Uh, Mother Teresa was here at this shrine. She spoke in the late 90s. There were 30,000 people here. I'm like, where did they park? So uh, Mother Teresa, and I got a chance to meet and talk to her a few times, and I worked with her sisters forever. And my other big hero, Saint Pope John Paul, and I also got to meet him. Anyone else here ever meet Pope John Paul II? Anybody? Over there, okay, yeah. So anybody at an event with him? A couple of people. So they probably the most viewed human in history, Pope John Paul. Think of all those travels, all those countries. That, I mean, he went everywhere. 
Uh, maybe not to the moon, but everywhere else, okay. Um, so the first time I met him was uh, before I was a friar. I was in college, and in my university, we had a study abroad program. So I was studying in Europe for a while, and the popes do this thing on Wednesdays called a general audience. So there's like a little prayer group, and then the pope gives like a teaching on something, and then he shakes hands and kisses babies, you know. And so I was there in the nine. This was the early '90s, and I got to go to this audience with Pope John Paul, my hero. It was so exciting, and I was on the aisle. You know, people who like get on the aisle, okay. And he came over to a group of us to talk to us, and it was just like, you know, how if you meet a celebrity, but who's also we knew he was a saint even in those days. It was so amazing to get blessed by him and to meet him. It's like my hero. And then it happened. Well, as we were talking to the Pope, on the other side of the aisle, there was this loud noise, and I look over, and it's a bunch of nuns. And they were, you know how nuns are, right? They're like, Holy Father, Holy Father, Holy Father, you know. <laughs> so the Pope is like, all right, I got to go over there. So after he blesses us and talks to us, he turns around, and as he's walking over to the nuns, he puts his hands behind his back. And he took his papal ring off and put it in his pocket. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, what did I just see? Like, the, why did the Pope do that? And he gets over there and, and all the nuns were like trying to touch him and everything. Well, I found out later that earlier on, there was a nun who stole his ring. You know, when you meet the Pope, it's traditional to kiss the ring in honor of his office. You know, it's like, what... What penance do you give if somebody's in confession? <laughs> Bless me, Father, for I've sinned. I stole the Pope's ring. You know, like, what penance do you... I, maybe it's unforgivable. I don't know. But So Pope John Paul took his ring off and put it in the pocket. I could not believe it. It was so funny. I was like, what is happening here? So that was the first time I met him. Okay. And then fast forward the tape, and I had an opportunity. You know, I'm a brother now, but not a priest. And they had this thing called World Youth Day. The Pope gets together with all the young people. Did you catch Pope Francis was just in Portugal? And they went to Fatima as well. So this was in the year 2000. Remember the Jubilee year 2000? We all woke up that morning on January 1st, like, okay, the world didn't end. Our computers didn't crash. Okay, Y2K. And so that year, the World Youth Day was in Rome, in the city of Rome. We were so excited to be able to go, and there were, I was with three brothers, and one of the brothers that I was with was a little bit of a, one of these guys that figures out how to do things. So he figured out there's a protocol. If you want to meet with the Pope, you get your bishop friends to write letters. So we had three bishop friends who wrote letters for us. And what you do is you send a letter to the Pope's office, and you say, we're going to be in Rome from this date to this date. We're staying at this place. Here's the phone number. And um, you may get selected to go to private mass with the Pope. So uh, we didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, super excited. We get to Rome. We get to this little monastery where we're staying. And when we get to the monastery, the secretary there comes up to us and she's like, where have you been? Where have you been? The Pope's office called you yesterday. You were supposed to go to mass with the Pope yesterday. And I fell to my knees like, no, like mix up with the dates i'm like of all the bad luck you know like to get invited to go to mass with the pope on but the day was we were still in america we weren't even in italy yet and so she gave me the pope's uh phone number for the office so i go to the square saint peter's square and they had pay phones you remember pay phones <laughs> so i get on this pay phone and much to my surprise the pope's secretary answered the phone Monsignor Jeevish, who's now a cardinal, and his English wasn't so good, so he was like, uh, like, call me back in two hours, call me back. So I called back in two hours. They have these nuns who run the switchboard at the Vatican. <laughs> and so what can happen is the nun can stay on the line to translate. So the, the sister stayed on the line. We got reinvited for another day. And so we, just the three of us with um, 17 other people, so 20 altogether, very small group, at Castle Gandolfo, which is a residence of the Pope outside of the city, we got invited to go to Mass with the Pope, and we got to meet him. And it was just such a, a wonderful thing. After Mass, he comes and sits in a chair, 
and we get to come up to him and you know i knelt at his knees to talk to him and the brother who went first um the pope's secretary said stay here and introduce the brothers to the pope you know so you can imagine you're introducing somebody to the pope and this brother who's like so simple i get up there and he goes holy father this is brother luke and the pope's like who <laughs> you know like it was so funny like no formality no anything and we had a beautiful little chat and um he told me the date that the world is going to end no no just kidding <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but it was just really neat. I had just read, there's this big biography on Pope John Paul, and I just had read it the week earlier. And, you know, it was just wonderful. And uh, this just wonderful saint today, Pope John Paul, pray for us, pray for us. So, so I'm going to connect this to the readings, believe it or not. So in the readings, there's a theme that comes together. And we have this story where Jesus is encountering these Pharisees, and the Pharisees had hardened their heart against Jesus. You know, ultimately, these are the guys that will orchestrate his crucifixion, but we know they had made a decision, they were against Jesus. And, th and that's an interesting detail because there's a lot of that happening in our world now, huh? There's a lot of people who are at odds with each other, even in families, you know, people's like, I haven't heard from so-and-so for so long. You know, there's that hardness of heart. They want to trap Jesus, so they present him with this question. And if he answers this way, they can get him. If he answers that way, they can get him. So it was a trap. And, Jesus, you know, so first of all, I would, the advice is don't argue with God. <laughs> You're going to lose, <laughs> okay. And so Jesus doesn't, you know, take the bait Here's, do we pay Caesar for taxes or not? If he says yes, then okay, the Jews were upset about paying taxes to Caesar. But if he said no, then the Romans could persecute Jesus for inciting rebellion against the state. So what are you going to do? He says, give me this coin, right? And he says, whose image is on it? And it's Caesar's image. And then he has that famous line, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's genius genius and what is he saying there now this is where it's interesting there's an image of caesar on the coin but if you know your bible the tremendous insights of our faith is that god's image is on us right it says in the book of genesis we are made in the image and likeness of god and so that that message of jesus cuts through all the games they were playing and he goes right to the heart of it you know, give to God's what is God's, that we, it has been revealed to us that we are made in God's image and likeness. My friends, there's no one who is able to explain what that means like Saint Pope John Paul II. I'm encouraging everybody to go back and look at what he taught about the human person. You know, that God has made us in his image and likeness. What does that mean? You know, that we, in a special way, different than any other creature, we reflect God in a special way. We have value and dignity that is not given to us by any state. It's given to us by God. And that value and that dignity demands that we respect each other, that the way we treat each other with tremendous charity patience, mercy, forgiveness, because of that image and likeness of God, the whole Catholic teaching on what it means to be a human is built on that foundation. And nobody could teach it as well as Pope John Paul. Once you understand that truth that God has revealed, there's so many other situations that we're seeing in the world that would not be there. If only we knew and believed and acted out of this truth that each one of us are made in God's image and likeness, huh? And so just to conclude, to remind you that Pope John Paul was also the Fatima Pope. He was the one that consecrated Russia to, Fatima, uh, to Our Lady as she asked at Fatima. And um, let's remember that at Fatima, Mother Mary told the children, are you ready for this? Prayer can stop war. Prayer. Prayer can stop war. They told the children that prayer can win the grace of God's peace. You know, everybody's afraid. Is like God going to punish the world? Is God, you know, 
Wouldn't it be something of God's allowing us to punish ourselves, huh? If everything we're seeing in the news, this terrible situation, people have a lot of fears and anxieties and questions. Could this spark something bigger? It might. We don't know. You know, could there be some sort of th World War III, some sort of nuclear bombs that get dropped? If it happens, I don't think any of us are going to be surprised, right? It, it feels like the pieces are in place. So I'm not trying to share that to scare anybody, but it is definitely the elephant in the room. And so what did Mary tell our late, the children at Fatima? What was the message of Pope John Paul? It is prayer. It is prayer. And when we pray, we're in relationship with God. That also has to do with our relationship with each other. Huh? The more we can love God, the more we can love each other. The more we love each other, the more we can love God. And in that way, prayer can stop wars. Prayer can win God's peace. This is the message that we need to hear. Today is Mission Sunday. This is the mission of the church. That means every single one of us, we are on a mission from God to tell the world about Jesus, about his love, about his gospel, and about this offer that God wants to have a relationship with us. It's a relationship that grows through prayer. And in that way, prayer can end war. So my friends, let us give thanks to God. His great love for us, his great mercy, this great invitation that's being offered to every single one of us that we can pray and in praying, we can have a great effect on the whole world. Amen.